Jesus name we pray our divine father we praise you we thank you for this purification you're bringing upon the church of Christ you're bringing upon the worshippers of the living God which is yourself I'm asking divine that this congregation will receive the message and their pattern of worship will be purified in Jesus name Father I'm praying that the grace of God the spirit of God will take this message to the body of Christ to those who want to worship God in spirit and in truth that they will know that you want holy worship, true worship, that has no glory in the flesh. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. We can be seated. Bible teaching today, we are considering the inspired dance of David in scripture. We are going to examine the inspired dance of David in the scripture. In the scripture examined. The inspired dance of David in the scripture examined. John chapter 4 We read verse 22 to 24. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit, and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The worship of God must be in spirit. By being born again. Being regenerated. Being saved from your sin. In spirit, you are not a sinner. You are alive in spirit. For God is spirit. And so, spirit must minister to spirit. Spirit must minister to spirit. Yes. It requires someone that is in the nature of God to communicate with God, to worship God, to bless God. You must be in the nature of God. And you get into the nature of God by salvation. In the book of Second Peter, chapter one. Second Peter, chapter one, verse two to verse four. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature 
having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, you have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, through the flesh, the desires of the flesh, fleshly appetite, fleshly gratification. You have escaped it. You are partaking with God of his divine nature. It is this way you can worship God. And the Bible says, the Lord seeketh such to worship him. The Lord is looking for these people that are conformed to his nature to praise him, to sing to him, to bless him, to thank him, to rejoice before him. Worshipping God in the spirit. Beside, they must worship him in spirit and in truth. What is truth? Thy word is truth. It means they are people given to practicing the word of God. Living in the word of God. In Psalm 119. Psalm 119 from verse 1, it goes, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. Let's read verse 7 together. One, two, go. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgment. Can you see? It's not just saying anything or doing anything, but based on scripture. I need your righteous judgment. The word of God. I want to know it. I want to live in it. It is in this way I can praise you with uprightness of heart. You don't just jump into doing anything and say it is the praise of God. Are you righteous? Are you clean? These people come it unto me with their mouth, but their hearts are far away from me. How be it in vain do they worship me? They go into some fleshly demonstration. Making noise, shouting, jumping, shaking, dancing, rolling on the ground. But their hearts are far away. They are not in conformity to my world. They are not in conformity to my nature. In this way, therefore, how much worship actually does God receive from man? In this way, can you truly be counted as a worshiper of Jehovah? In this way, do you think what you do enters heaven before God? Are you born again? Are you righteous? Do you follow the word of God? Have, do you exalt the word of God above the songs you sing? The clapping of hands. What about the dancing that you do? Is it in conformity to the word of God? So that's what the Lord will want us to learn. Look, read verse 7 again. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. How can I get that ability? 
How will I be able to do this? How will I have the power to do this? To praise God with uprightness of heart in this corrupt world, in the presence of Satan and his temptations, in the darkness of life. How can I accept I learn thy righteous judgments. How, where without shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto, according to the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against you, that I might worship you aright. Now, in this way therefore, we are saying the dancing that people are doing today in the church of God in the name of worship has no meaning. Has no meaning. It's not that instituted in the worship of God. Is not part of solemn worship of God. It's not. It's not practiced. Was not practiced by the worshippers of Jehovah in the Old Testament. Was not practiced by the believers in the church of Christ from the beginning of the church. Upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The worship accepted was that done in the spirit according to the scriptures. Now, we are going to consider this inspired dance of David in scripture. Because many stand to it, many caught it, many ignorant preachers caught this passage and teach their worshippers to play abomination before God. They demonstrate this in the pulpit, in the altar, to show people example of dancing in the worship of God. They roll on the ground. They employ various body shakes, various kinds of style, twisting, jumping and turning of the body in the name of worship. No, don't do after them. We are going to examine the dance of David. We are going to see that scripture that many used to stumble. Let's go to the book of Second Samuel chapter 6 from verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 6 from verse 1. Yes. The scripture tells us here. Saying. Again David gathered together. All the chosen men of Israel. 30,000. And David arose. And went with all the people. That were with him. From valley. Of Judah. To bring up from thence. The ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, that dwelleth between the, the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, that was in Gibeah, and Uzzah, and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. Amen. David loved God, as we know. He had taught in himself, how am I living in a sealed house, goodly house, and the house of God dwelt in ten that he loved his God. He wanted to glorify God. To build a great house for God. But for now he wanted to bring the ark to his own city. 
to a tabernacle in his own city. So he got so many people, so many people to go, about 30,000, to bring the ark to Jerusalem, to the city of David. So when they went, they carried the ark upon a cat. A, a cat. It's like a, a vehicle they made for the ark. To make carrying it easier because the distance was long distance. So, and in carrying this, uh, this, uh, Ark of the Covenant, they accompanied the Ark at the back and in the front by two sons of Abinadab, the man that housed the, car, I mean, the Ark of the Covenant for quite some time. Now, as they were coming out of there, moving to Jerusalem. See the normal order. It's an act of worship. Joy. Celebration. See the normal order in Israel. In verse 5, it goes, And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments, made of fair tree, fair wood, even on herbs, and on psalteries, and on timbrels, and on cornets, and on cymbals. This is normal. Accompanying it. Check all true worship in divine presence in the nation Israel. They will mention the instruments they use for singing and playing. They never mentioned the word dancing. They never. And in this way, everybody followed the act in the joy of God. With a glad heart. Rejoicing, singing, shouting, jubilating. The word dance was carefully removed. To show that there was no dancing there. It's an exciting thing. The glorious thing. That the dust of the head would have suffered. If they were dancing there. Now. Verse 6. And when they came to. Nakon's threshing floor. Uzzah put forth his hand. To the ark of God. And took hold of it. For the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him in, into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And it was told David, saying, The Lord had blessed the house of Obed-Edom, and all that pertained unto him because of the act of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. I'll tell you now. Come, the children of Abinadab that accompanied the ark were not Levites. They were not qualified to touch the ark. Two, the instruction given for conveying the ark was not the one they used. Carrying it upon a car, the Levites were the ones to carry the ark of God. That was the instruction. Now, when they were going Whatever happened to the cows 
that was carrying the cart. The, the cart is like, a, um, what do we call it? It's like this kekenape that has attachment to it whilst somebody was riding it. At this time, it's, it is animals use. One cow here, another cow there. Or one particular cow, this, this carriage was attached to it. So, the animal shook. And as a result, it was as if the, the ark of God, of the ark of the covenant, was to fall. So, Uzzah, to prevent it from falling, rushed to keep it from falling and touched it. Immediately, God was angry. These people are not keeping order. These people serve me carelessly. These people don't know that you must be perfect in all you do. God killed him immediately. He fell down there and died. Everybody became afraid. David became afraid. David was sad for what had happened and became afraid. Ha, ah, I can't carry this to Jerusalem. I don't know what will happen on the way. Whether everybody will die. So he branched to the house of another man there and put the cat in the house of the man. Yes. He put the cat in the house of Obed Edom, the Gittite. Now, in fear, what do I do now? But the God of judgment is still the God of love. The God of chastisement is, is still the God of friendliness. So he noticed that, as he got the story, that the house of Obed Edom has been blessed. Life is wonderful there. The people are blessed. The people are happy. The, why? The presence of the ark was communicating joy, peace, and prosperity to them. They, yes, this is my God. This is my God. That's why I love him. That's why I want to serve him. That's why I want to do everything good for him. Now, with this information, David, all fear left David. With confidence and joy, he was going to carry this ark to Jerusalem. That day, and I trust, as you should know, that day alone, David dressed with a priestly garment. He is not of the he is not of the house of Aaron. So he. He was not supposed to do that. He's of the tribe of Judah. But excitement, joy, is in a wonderful way. Made David to put on a priestly garment. He wore the ephod. He put on the priestly garment. And was joyful and glad. Now, he went again to bring the ark out of the house of Obed Edom. Yes. So in verse 13. And it was so that when they that bear the ark, you see it now, that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. It was no more cat used back to divine instruction. You shall make the Levites bear the ark of the covenant. Whatever distance you're going, let me carry the burden. Why do you refuse to carry the burden? Many of you will shelve off the pains of worship. Suffering included in worship, in the service of God. You want to carry your responsibility and give another. You want somebody else. Why? God wants you to come in and bear burden on himself. Why are you avoiding bearing burden for God? You're pushing it always to somebody else. Is he not your creator? Why are you running away from burden? From suffering? Now the people have realized it. Serve God with the whole of your being. Allow the rain to fall on you. Allow the sun to fall on you. To bite you. Move. Serve this God. Be soaked in him. That's what God wants. So they were going on. Now, 
doing the correct thing at this time. Serving the Lord. Moving with him. In verse 14, and David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was guided with a lining effort, a priestly garment. A priestly garment. If you notice then, it should be David alone. Of other tribes, David alone was wearing this priestly garment. Nobody else. Why? That's, that, something came on David. The joy was great. Something, 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 something. So, the second thing that happened there was this David's dance. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. Now we're going to see what. See this. The first time they went to bring this ark, there was no dancing. Not of David, not of the congregation. The second time, the joy was great. What happened? There was spiritual impartation, inspiration on David. High! To the point of involving the flesh. Jumping, leaping, Jumping with all his mind, shaking, rejoicing, dancing. Now we go forward. And so David, so David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Micah, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and so King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. She despised him in her heart. She despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place. In the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the, the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he dealt among the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well as to the women as, as men, to everyone a cake of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine. So all the people departed, everyone to his house. Remember, 30,000 people officially went for this. We couldn't tell how many joined them up on the way. Then David returned to bless his household. And Michal, the daughter of Saul came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today. At this time, it was a mockery. Who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants? as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. Take the words of Michal and see the way Michal saw that demonstration in David. Michal was the first wife of David, the wife of his youth, the daughter of Saul. He got married to her when he was serving as a, a soldier under the leadership of King Saul. Remember, he paid for Michael's bride price. He paid Michael's bride price by the first kings of about a hundred Philistines. He got beyond them. So Michael was. The first wife of David. And he said of Micah, 
she loved David. So, see the love of her youth. The man that she put her youthful love on. And David loved Michal. To the point of going to bring the four skins of hundred Philistines. Which means he killed a hundred Philistines. And brought their private part to King Saul. Well, it is in the battle against them. Saul wanted to fight these Philistines. But at this time he thought that the Philistines would overcome David. Because David was to go a lot and do it. But David knew how he mobilized and went to do it. Now you can see, Michal had observed David from their youth all to the time by persecution. When Saul wanted to kill David, David ran away. And that's why David could not come again because of Saul for so many years. And Michal eventually could not stay like that. She got married to another man. When David became king, he demanded his wife, Michal, to be brought to him. So they had to go to the second husband of Michal and say, your wife is going back to the original husband. And the original husband, for your information, is King David. The man cried. As Micah was going to see David, that's my husband. With the fresh love, the love of the youth. So, Micah knew David. Micah respected David. She knew the honor of kingship because her father had been a king. She had lived in the royal palace all her life. So she knew the honor of kingship. She knew nobility. She knew all this. She knew David so well. And when she returned, she also st stayed with David and knew David too. Life, character, the worship of God, and all she knew. Being a prominent woman, she knew about worship nature in Israel. The rejoicing time. When people rejoiced before God, she knew all that. Because she was a celebrity herself. So, but see what Michal said to David. He said, huh? when David came home, Michael answered him. He said, verse 20, Then David returned to bless his household. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today. They had become like friends. But you embarrass me. Hey, is that how to live in glory? Is that how to serve God gloriously? How glorious. That's, it's a mockery now. And see her now coming out with what her pains. See her coming out with what troubled her. She said, Who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants? With all the young, the men, the men, the, the women gathered around. You were jumping that way. You were dancing, jumping. Is that not a shame? You were removing your dignity. You removed your honor. You removed your dignity in the presence of human beings. In the presence of multitudes of people in Israel today. See how you were doing it. Dancing. Jumping. David, what, what came upon you today? I never saw this in your life. Come. And he said, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servant as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself? Check it now. As one of the vain fellows, vain fellows, hooligans, Vain fellows, area boy. Vain fellow, 
empty people. People without honor. Boys on the streets. What you have done, you behave like a boy on the street. You behave like a holy girl. What you did is like a holy girl. Now, from the address of Michael, David alone was doing those things. It's not everybody. It was not everybody in the crowd. Otherwise, Michael would have been concerned over the whole crowd and said, what happened to this crowd today? No. The crowd were not doing what David was doing. David had some special specialness, something special, something looking different that came on him that time. That was why she was concerned. And he said, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself, what you have done is a thing of shame. When you watch old men and old women struggling to dance, it looks shameful. It looks shameful. When you watch some of these ministers of dignity go to play themselves, jumping and dancing, it looks shameful. As one of the vain fellows, shamelessly. As for vain fellows, they can do anything without bothering. But not you. You are a man of God. You are a child of God. You are a noble man. Yes, it is in the worship of God. But you behave queer. You behave strange. You played the fool. But what you did is not common. Now, that is what we need to know. That is what we need to understand about David's dance. And David said unto Michal, it was before the Lord, what you saw me do, I was spiritually inspired. The Lord came on me in a special way and controlled. I couldn't remember I had flesh. I never even thought of how, whether I was dancing nice, Dancing expertly, whether was, that thought never came because the Lord was there. It was before the Lord. It is not act of flesh demonstrated. Dancing once in a while can be embarked on when the presence of the Lord overwhelms a person before the Lord. At that time, the mind doesn't go to the flesh to, to consider the pleasure of the flesh. The people surrounding, no. And except in this peculiar divine presence, the flesh, going to shake your flesh, dance in this, this style, vigorous dance, will incur iniquity. It will breed pride. It will attract attention. It will become something that is of the flesh that profited nothing. That is what we need to know. That is why it is not practiced often. No. Very scarce. It's part of natural human display like laughter, jumping, but dancing no, in the community. No, 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 no. Not employed because the flesh is sensitive. Give it a place. It will bring sin. It will change your thought inside. Bring, bring ladies, boys and girls together and watch the behavior of some boys there. In that mixed cr crowd of boys and girls, you will start seeing some boys acting somehow. They have been affected. The flesh is at work. You will start seeing them behave for a show. 
the flesh has been affected. The flesh is at work. Some girls too, right in such crowd. The flesh, when you give it its time, give it a place, it will demonstrate itself. Walk in spirit. So that you do not have occasion to give a place to the flesh. Serve God in the spirit and don't give occasion to the flesh. That's what the word of God is saying. To demonstrate and show forth its appetites. To show forth its own corruption. Don't allow it. We are of the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and have no confidence in the flesh. God seeks such to worship him. They that must worship, God is a spirit, and they that must worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. See David's own case here. He said it was the Lord in his presence. I was overwhelmed. Now, we say he never did this before. He never did this after this time. Once in his life. Michael knew David that he had never done it. Otherwise, he won't be accusing him as a vagabond. What happened to you today? He had known David that he, he never did it. Although he was a musician himself, but not this dancing, jumping type. And from that time, he never did it again. Once in his lifetime. Now let's listen to the answer David gave. And David said unto Michael, It was before the Lord, who, who chose me before thy father, and before all his people, to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord, and I will yet be more vile than those, and will be based in mine own side, and of the maidens, or, and of the maid servants, which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. It was before the Lord. Now, from this talk, David is showing something here. God chose me before your father, in the presence of your father, when your father was still king. God chose me to be a ruler of Israel. Because the Benjamites have been accusing David, the, you bloody man, the blood of the house of Saul that you slew is upon you. So Michal might have such impression, such feeling. She might have that thought that David used some games. Maybe he went to arrange with the enemy nations to kill her father so that he would take over the throne. That thought might be there. And that would have breed, cost, or would have cost this despair too in her heart. That would have caused this resentment that led her to despising David. Now, what was the implication of despising David? Verse 23. Everybody want to go. Therefore, Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child Unto the day of her death. Say it again. Therefore, Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. Therefore means as a result of this. As a result of what? As a result of her disdain of David. As a result of her disdain of David. Michal, the daughter of Saul, 
had no child until she died. A reason can cause childlessness. Now, what caused this issue? Was Michael wrong for expressing sure? I said, she was not. So she didn't sin because she expressed shock of what happened. She didn't sin. Because of the reasons I gave you, she had never seen that in her husband. She had never seen that in Israel. She has never seen that in the worship of Jehovah. So she should be shocked. Her being shocked meant did not bring it was not sinful. No. She was not so her barrenness did not come because she was shocked to see David dancing. No. It didn't come as a result of that. But her barrenness came because she despised David and spoke arrogantly and despicably to him. There was no respect. Woman, be careful. Don't despise your husband. The Bible tells you, respect your husband. Honor your husband. Normal husband. In Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 33. The Bible tells us, saying, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Every one of you. Whether your husband is in position or no, that you are a wife, respect him. Ensure you don't speak reproachfully against your husband. Ensure you don't look narrowly to belittle your husband. Ensure you don't despise your husband in your heart. Ensure you don't treat your husband as a child, for such is punishable by God. Such is punishable by God. How much more that David was an anointed man of God, anointed king, honor the king, honor the king, anointed servant of God, a preacher of righteousness. The Bible says, See, no those who labor among you, who labor in doctrine among you, to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. As a minister, respect your husband. He is not just a husband, but anointed man. Would you despise that person who will not fight you and God will not punish you for his sake? God will not take over the, the vengeance. Leave vengeance unto me, said the Lord. If it were a sinner husband, you would have received slaps. You would have been pushed down and marched upon. But he cannot do it. 
because of Christ, because of his commitment to God, will not God take over and do it in your life. Fear God. Fear the man of God. Even if he's your husband, respect him. Don't despise him in your heart. Yes. That is what the word of God is saying. Honor the king. And if your husband happens to be the king, honor him. Don't be too familiar. That was the case. He did evil, but be ye angry and sin not. What you saw was evil. What you judged was evil. What you discovered was evil. What you thought that he had done evil, even with all that assumed evil or actual evil, it says, be ye angry, but sin not. Don't bring the devil into the family. Neither give the devil a place. So let the women learn this. Yes. David explained his cause to her. He let her know that his dance was before the Lord. That it was a peculiar manifestation of God's spirit in his life. David showed displeasure at her obstinacy. But she did not repent of her heart. She did not repent of the despite that she exercised on David from her heart. She did not humble to give glory to God and honor to David, the man after God's heart. Hence, the judgment came unnoticed upon her and remained until her death. She didn't even know She just saw that as years were going, nothing changed. All her prayers didn't work. Every, why? There is an accresting. Your tire has picked a nail in your journey of life. Check it and repent. Otherwise, you will be disappointed in that journey. That journey will stop. The Lord shall part from you. The Lord shall stop you. Look at it in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 30. The Bible tells us here, saying, Ezekiel 18, verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. Everyone According to his ways, see the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your reign. Repent. But Michal didn't repent with all explanation David gave. With the, with the sorrowful heart David expressed. For the angry Angry heart, David displayed before her, for her evil work. She never humbled. Never humbled to say, Ah, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't see it this way. I thought, I was just wondering, what really had that come upon you? Oh, so it was a special move by God that you could not explain yourself. Ah, this is great. She never came to repentance. So, judgment fell upon her. David reminded Michal that it was the Lord who made him king over Israel. It was before him. Who am I before God? I will be yet more vile if the Lord comes again upon me. I will yet be the most vile. If the Lord comes again, in the pool of Bethesda, the angel will come once in a while. Whoever went in there first got healed. But when the angel didn't come down, 
and somebody entered into the water, will he be healed? No. It was a special steering of God that I did that you saw. You never saw it in my life before. If it happens like that again, I'm telling you, I will abandon myself before God and be the more contemptuous in your sight. But of these women, you think I am contemptuous? I'm, I, I, they, they look at me and despise me. No, they don't despise me as you are doing. Because they see grace and glory. They are wondering at the presence of God in my life. They will not behave like you. Your heart is affected by your father's case. That's why you are bringing out all this kind of thing. So, there are three unusual things in the life of David that were accustomed to David only in life. None other. And these three things are his mastery over Goliath in the war. When he had never reached the age of war, nobody else did this. And it happened once. It was a great thing that gave glory to God. It happened once. As for that he killed the lion, Samson had done that. But this handling Goliath, a young boy, Maybe at the age of 17. Handling a man of war from his youth. From his youth. And bringing great victory upon Israel. It never happened before. So don't compare your life to this man. God is singling out this man for something different. God is building testimony around this man for something in the future. When the Lord shall make him the father of Jesus after the flesh. When the Lord shall establish his kingdom forever. The Lord knew him. So, see, you have seen it in the battle. David conquered Goliath. The second thing was the showbread that David ate in the temple. David came with some men running away from King Saul. Let's look at it in First Samuel chapter 21 verse 3 to verse 6. First Samuel chapter 21 verse 3 to 6. You can see very peculiar to David. The Bible tells us in First Samuel chapter 21, verse 3 to verse 6. Well, let me start from verse 1. Then came David to Nob to Ahimelech the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David and said unto him, Where art thou alone? And no man would do. And David said unto Ahimelech, the priest, the king had commanded me a business and had said unto me, let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee and what I have commanded thee. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in mine hand. Or what there is present. David was hungry. They had eaten nothing. He had some people with him. Now he went to the temple. He, I will find food here. Can you give me no more bread available? So, give, give me five loaves. We share with my people. The man was afraid. Ah, where are you alone? Man of God. He gave him a reason. 
I said, give me the bread. Now the king said, the priest said this, verse 4. And the priest answered, answered David and said, there is no common bread under my hand, but there is hallowed bread, holy bread, hallowed, hallowed, holy. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women, and David answered the priest and said unto him, of a truth women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. The, king, the, the priest now said, the bread I have is a holy, is holy bread, which only priests should eat, and you are not a priest. Sure, the young men that follow you are not priests. But, however, what brought that, however, a, a provision came from God. As the Spirit came on David to kill Goliath, a provision came from God to make allowance for David on this ceremonial law. It's not a moral law. It's not a moral law. Moral laws are binding. No excuse whatsoever. But ceremonial law, which the Lord made a special provision for David when this man came up with a condition, being sure that God gave that condition to him, if this young men have never slept with women I, and have kept themselves clean, I will give you this bread. That law is not written down. It is a divine provision made for David. Why? God was interested in the cause of David. God was involved in his cause. And David said, no, we have been in this journey for three days. So we didn't come at any woman. No ma we are not traveling with our wives. No man had anything to do with woman for four days. So we are for three days. So we are clean. In fact, we are holy. So bread is holy. We are holy. It, it, it think, everything rhymes well together. Praise the Lord. It was divine illumination. And it never happened to anybody before this time. Neither had David eating this holy bread before this time, since he was born. It was a provision made for David. It was a provision made for David. And so, uh, the Bible tells us, the priest therefore, verse 16, so the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there, but the showbread that was taken from, from before the, the Lord. You can see it now, from before the Lord. I want to talk to you about special things that the hand of the Lord performed. It's not everybody. Special thing. The Lord. The Lord shall deliver you unto me and I shall cut off your head from you, the Lord. And all the earth shall know that there is a God in Israel. Now, it is the Lord again that is giving David his bread. He made provision for David for his foreknowledge. So, the bread was given to David and the men with him and they ate nothing like that repeated. The third thing is David's dance. David's inspired dance. This one himself alone as the battle was himself alone against Goliath. 
the done himself alone. How? By the Lord. Before the Lord. Under the inspiration of the Lord. Overwhelmed by the Lord. It was a thing that is not common. He himself was not doing it before. The whole community and nation of Israel were not doing it in worship. This vigorous, this vigorous dancing with mind. No! No! The worship of God is solemn. It centers on the heart. It is something of putting your heart before God. Checking up your life. That you are walking in his word. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy commandments. I will worship you with uprightness of heart. After I have kept thy statutes. The word is involved in worship. Righteousness is involved in worship. And not abandonment to the shaking of the flesh. And you call it dancing. But. David's own case, the Lord steered him one day. The Lord steered him one day to dance. The Lord did it. And because the Lord was involved, the flesh was conditioned. The presence of God kept away Satan. Kept away temptations. Kept away vile thoughts. Kept away evil feelings. That is it. So, that is what, that is it. Look, these three things, that's what you need to do. We have proved that this dance was uncommon among worshippers of God in the Old Testament. David himself had never danced this way before. Neither was this repeated any time in his life until he died. It was a special manifestation of the Holy Spirit in his life. But now, while dance in the church today. Now, you see, this, I'm bringing this message from worshipping God in the beauty of holiness. The message I preached day before, I mean, last Sunday, I was reading through here. Again, I am reading also through here. I'm bringing explanations to you. Everything is written down. And this book should be maybe 10 years old in, in Horemo. I wrote this book. Immediately I came out from Deeper Life Bible Church. I was burdened by what I saw going on in the world in the name of worship. I wanted to say, to bring out a pure, clean worship for people to know and to follow. So this message has been there. It's only some of you don't read or you read, you don't pick it. Sometimes when I see my coordinators shake themselves in a way, I look at them and say, your day is coming. I don't have time now. Let's go. I will stop these things. I'm told that a woman came here this morning and that the dance she was doing in the morning service was a serious one. She was not in our Bible study. If she were, all those things would have been pocketed and bound up and thrown into a waste paper basket. A particular preacher came to a minister's conference in one of these countries. Yay! Yeah. When they were singing and playing and dancing, his dance was number one. He danced, was so happy, 
Somebody met him and said, Which, Where are you doing this type of thing in the presence of God? He said, No, David danced. I will dance as David danced. You get to your sentence, you have not understood. Then, the brother and I say, can you take this book and go and read it? Pure and corrupt dance in the Bible. He carried the book and after the conference he went back to his place. And in another conference he came back in that country. So when it was time for dancing, as people were dancing, he folded his hands. <laughs> <laughs> you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free the man had been set free when he was standing like this they met him again why didn't you dance he said mm, I didn't know you didn't know I say you didn't know before but now knowledge has come Will you obey? But some will say, now, worship will no more be sweet. You were entertaining yourself. You were worshiping yourself. You were bringing pleasures to yourself, not to the living God. I will tell you again next Bible study. We are still going to now list out to you the evils of dancing in the congregation. I will optimize them for you. It's still in this book. If you can get the book, you will even go there and know them because I'm not sure to exhaust them in the next Bible study. So, that is what I'm saying now. Now, the wild, the wild dance in the church today. From the early church until recent time, Christian worship, Christian worship service had been a sober and solemn moment. Emphasis had been on the heart receiving grace from God and giving adoration to Him. All attention was focused on God in the songs, sermons, prayers, and other activities. The flesh was not given a place to exercise itself in dancing. Sinners who came to the church came with soberness and bore the consciousness and guilt of their sins as they sat in the presence of the Lord. The preachers preached solemnly with firm commitment to, com to communicate the mind of God to the people. Yet, the worship was glad, was with gladness, the worship was lively, inspiring, and joyful. The heart was made glad by the word of God. The praises of God and the manifestations of the Holy Spirit was clear among the people. No dancing. That's how worship had been. That is how worship have been the smiles, laughter, clapping of hands, shouts or cries of the worshippers were not mechanical or philosophical, but spirit inspired. The converts were genuine, righteousness and holiness reigned supreme in the worship service. That is it. But, in recent time, a new wave rolled into the church. In recent time, a new wave rolled into the church. Now, even in our eyes, we notice that in the 70s, there was no dancing in the church. Was there? No. In the 60s, no. The gospel that came did not come with dancing. But something happened. 
Maybe is will I even mention it late seventy? No. It should be in the in the early eighties. Should be in the early eighties. Some defilements entered into the church. Maybe late seventies to early eighties. Entered into the church and corrupted everything. Number one. Women wearing trousers. They, that entered in late 80s. I'm talking particularly in our country. To late 70s, early 80s. In fact, more of early 80s. Number two, women using attachment on their head. It was never seen before. It came in in our generation. Is it generation now? Just a few years ago, from early 80s, women perming their hair came in around the same time dancing in the church. All this came in together. It was introduction of demons. Somebody said the Satanic people met together in Burkina Faso in 1984 and were planning how do we do to corrupt the church? How do we do to abuse God? Abuse the mentality of God? So these things came by Satanic plan to corrupt the worship of God. Ye worship. Ye know not what ye worship. You came to satisfy yourself in the church, not God, because you don't know whom you are worshiping. The holiness of that God that wants a perfect heart from you. The God, greatness of that God who is spirit and accepts only worship from spirit beings. The God of the eternal world who accepts worship that is in conformity to his world. All these were abused by satanic plan and Satan took over the churches. Now, you go to some churches, they may arrange some little children to dance for you. Beautiful dance. Do they know Jesus? Are they born again? Why are they dancing? What are they doing there? Worship. Everybody clapping for Jesus. Ignorant men. These people all know me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me? Teaching for teaching themselves the traditions of men. The doctrines of men. The Bible says full well they have rejected my commandments that they might keep their own doctrine that gives them pleasure. Is this dancing not for your pleasure? Is it not for your pleasure? Does it not satisfy you? Does it not satisfy you? I did dancing not for their pleasures over there. Who spend most of the time dancing. And some of them, when the dancing period has passed, church closed, they are going back home. Ah, but they, they are preaching the word. They invited the preacher. Leave that finish. Dancing has finished. When a particular brother came up to say, Hey, my eyes have opened. We shall not be dancing in this church again. A woman there says, Then I'm leaving to another church. That is their life. Then I'm leaving to another church. So, corruption entered in. Corruption entered in. Dancing now forms a major part of church worship service. This is tact praise worship. The dance which is being practiced is the wild type. 
both men and women, ministers and members, adults and children, are engaged in this dance. The scripture they use for this wild dance is the one in consideration. David danced. I will dance as David danced. For how many days? Are you covered with the presence of God? Is there righteousness among you? How will you dance as David danced? How many times? What about the people who are around David? Did they dance? You are teaching the congregation of God dancing. David danced. That's what he said. Having considered the text of David's dance, we see the great error these churches and their ministers are into and how impossible to attend to the holiness of God with such practice. Emphasis now shifts to music, musical instruments, singing and dancing. Little time goes to prayer and the ministry of God's word. The ministers and members wear mechanical joy and are musically excited and intoxicated. I've told you how the musicians have to dress to entertain the people. They dress demonical or demonic and play wild to entertain the people. Michal, the daughter of Saul, the wife to David, can truly accuse the church of this present generation and be justified by God. She can despise the worshippers of the church of this generation and be justified by God. Yes. The proof of spirituality in the church today is not righteous character but some particular styles of body movement in dances. Surely, devil would deny Yes, he would deny that the church of the present generation is following after his steps in their wild dances because he danced this only once in his lifetime and that by complete inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Yes, let those who engage in these dances know that they are sinning and so must repent before the Lord God. These dances are the result of half big converts in the church and in crusade ground because the environment is not favorable for the spirit of holiness to bring deep conviction on the sinners. Drunkards come in. People have committed immorality and they come in and you say, hey, 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 the Lord is good for everybody. Boom, 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 boom. Shake away the conviction of God. Satan, you won't come here. I say you don't come here. Are you ready for this holy walk with God? Are you supporting holiness revival movement in the movement God has given in righteousness and holiness for the last harvest and for rapture readiness? This is the way. Throw away the old way. So that those who are looking for flesh will leave this place. Because they do, it's not only dancing, they are doing many things of the flesh. We want those who will worship God in spirit and in truth. Yes. Listen. I told you that the Jews in their temples, in solemn meetings, worshipped God. These dances were not there. I'll give you one reason. The, the Muslims, I said it before, the Muslims copied the religion of the Jews. And they worship God in the, in the mosque as the Jews worshipped God in synagogues. 
Now, the question is, do you see Muslims dancing in the mosque? I will ask you again. Do you see Muslim dancing in the mosque? In the mouth of two or three witnesses. I will ask the third one. Do you see Muslims dancing in the mosque? Because they inherited as they saw in ancient worship the solemnity, the dedication and submission, the meditation and soliloquying that worshippers go into in the presence of God. They, know, they stand what prominent thing they do in their mocks is the reading of their Quran and interpretation of it. The major thing there, they had known that we congregate not to our flesh, but to the world. And yet, it is in deception. Yet they worship, they don't know why. They worship, but they don't know why. We worship and we know what because we worship God in the spirit and according to the word that is revealed. Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Believe on the Lord Jesus. We worship God with faith on the Lord Jesus. They have a pattern. They don't have the person. But the churches of this time say they have the person of worship, but they don't have the pattern. You are the same. All of you 50%. 50, give 50 there to them. They have the pattern. Give them 50. They don't have the person. They, they cannot get 100% to qualify. This, the churches of this time have the person but they don't have the pattern. The same fellow are. They have not passed, you have not come to 100% which God wants. But, we are of the circumcision that serve God in the spirit and have no confidence in the flesh. That is holiness, revival, movement, worldwide. That's what we should be doing now. Serve God with born again life. Don't go on just dancing. Coordinators, carry this thing and tell your people and stop those smokes there that are disturbing our worship. Quench them. Quench them. Chorus leaders that come to dance, dance wild about in the pulpit. Go and stop them. Or remove choruses from them. And you coordinators don't go and come to the pulpit and be, give you the example of dancing. The apostles of all never did it. Neither do I demonstrate that to you. That is what we want to know. That is the truth about it. Holiness must come back. To the world. To the church of Christ in the world. Now. Second. The Catholic church. As they rightly say and boast. Is the first church. First church. Which means. A church that God formed and continued to this time. Yes. Watch the Catholic Church before Satan multiplied among them. Was there dancing in the Catholic Church? You know, when the poor Kota on a road, the third a road, and the road came to spoil, 
there will still be a sign that this road was tarred before. Some places you will still see the tar there, showing they tarred this road before. It's only a spoil. So that's how the Catholic Church is. You will still see some relics there to show that these people were like this. Drums entered the Catholic. In fact, some churches, some Catholic church, I'm not sure drums have entered there yet. They never danced. It's, although corruption has entered in now, multiplied corruption, but we could see in them that the church of Christ was not a dancing church. Pentecostal brought it. Pentecostalism brought it. And they call it Holy Ghost. Since these churches don't have their actual Holy Ghost, they brought drums to represent the Holy Ghost. Everybody that must start a church must have a, must have a drum, set of musical instruments. How will you be a church without a set of musical music, musical instruments? How will the people come? Not the Holy Ghost again. Yes. These dances are the result of how they converts in the church and in crusade ground. Because the environment is not favorable for the spirit of holiness to bring deep conviction on the sinners. Many of the believers in dancing churches are not holy and so are not strong in the Lord. Lost. Temptation of every kind. Pride. Demonstration of all nature. Music. Satanic music of all nature. That's what Satan said. I introduced music and some, some music and songs into the church. Well, they stand up and begin to engage in it. I come in smoothly. I come in unnoticed and do havoc among them. That's what Satan said. I come in unnoticed and do havoc. What about this naked dressing the devil has brought in now in the church of Christ? Up dancing to it. Everybody has died in that place. I'm telling you. Apart from the minisque, they still caught it at the back. I said, whoever is at my back, oh, ho, ho, ho. And kill the presence of God. Jesus will request you to come back to the church. May the Lord come back to his church in righteousness and holiness. May this message not only be for holiness revival movement, but for the church of Christ worldwide. That the holiness of God in worship should be recovered. May the revelation of this truth make his people free from contamination and impurity in worship of God. May the Lord make you understand that it should start from you. In Jesus' name. Let's rise up and begin to worship the Lord. And thank the Lord. And kill fleshly appetite. He has no place in the Bible. Inspired dance of David examined in Scripture. Inspired dance of David in Scripture examined. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth 
shall make you free. Give thanks to God for giving you the knowledge of truth. Give thanks and offer yourself to God for thorough cleansing to remove this appetite, this defilement in your life. Remove dancing appetite from you. Thank you, Father. that this message will go to the ends of the earth and recover the church of God from corruption, from evil worship. Contrary to the word of God. Jesus name we pray I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart I will enter his court with praise praise the Lord I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. Deeper, I'm 
getting deeper, deeper, deeper every day. I'm getting deeper, deeper, deeper in the wiser. I'm getting wiser, 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 holy. I'm getting richer, 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 song into prayer. Tell God I will continue to go deep into your world. To be more rooted into your world. I am getting more insight. The knowledge of the word of God is what will liberate you from every captivity, every form of darkness. The Lord have opened our eyes to see the evil of dancing in the church. The evil of corruption in worship. Tell God, I don't want to be a victim. Neither should I lead any congregation, any unit, any chapter, my zone, my state, into corrupt dancing activities in the church. Oh God, open my eyes and liberate me and liberate members of my congregation. We pray that this message will affect the hearts of men and women worldwide in the gospel. That they will come to this truth and then come out of corrupt activities in the worship of God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Pray for our Father in the Lord that God will use him beyond this and liberate the church from every form of darkness. That God will give him more insight on what to tell the church for its total liberation from all form of captivity. Father, we bless you. Oh God, we worship you. Lord, we lift your name high. Be glorified. Be magnified. Be exalted, Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Father, we want to thank you for the blessed message you have given to us today. Opening our eyes to know how we should get rid of ungodliness. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord my God, cause dancing in the church to become unpopular increasingly unpopular in our time in the name of Jesus Amen. Heavenly Father we give you praise thank you for talking to us again let this message dwell in our spirit that our worship with you shall be in truth and in spirit 
Thank you for as many that have confessed the power of dancing in their life will command a broken in the name of Jesus. The corruption in dancing in churches that have affected the body of Christ worldwide. The power that the devil has used to affect the people of God will bind that power and destroy it in the body of Christ worldwide. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, at this end time, cause us to attain holiness in worship. Purity in worship. Worshiping in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing us, Lord. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, Contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus I believe
Yeah. 